Twelve days have passed since Auckland student Hamid Sudan was due to be released in Iraq. With no news, the silence has been deafening. We talked to an Al-Qaeda expert about Hamid's chances of being reunited with his family. Plus, fun with meat on Christmas Day. Reporter Connie Buchanan fleshes out what's hot for holiday dinners. That's on Close Up at 7 o'clock. The NRL's problem booze culture is in the spotlight again. This time, kangaroo Craig Gower is being investigated after a raucous two-day bender. His rugby league future is now in doubt. Wayne Bennett quit as Australian league coach because he was sick of the drunks. So he wouldn't like hearing this. Uh, what about this uh, drinking I reckon has been happening over there? <laughs> Didn't get enough going? Oh, I'm just trying to get into it now. Lighthearted fun turned nasty at night when, according to witnesses, Gower groped the daughter of Wayne Pearce. Pearce wouldn't comment today, but Nine News is aware he's fuming and may have had a physical altercation with Gower. Gower didn't return calls, but his manager Greg Willett faced the music. He just, you know, denies it. You know what I mean? He said that's not, not how it was. And, uh, you know, I can only vouch for his character. It's claimed Gower also tried to pick a fight with Pierce's son Mitchell, a talented young league player who has just been signed by the Sydney Roosters. Other allegations include that Gower was kicked out of an official function, that he walked around the resort naked, and that he crashed a golf cart, which he says he'll pay for. It was his bucks week. You know what I mean? Everyone was buying him beers and that. He had two days of a Bucks party and things like that. Gower's due to marry his longtime fiancée, Amanda Flynn, from Channel 9's footy show in three weeks. The NRL are fully aware of the incident, but won't provide comment until they get a full report from the Penrith Club. One of the largest contingents of Kiwi sports fans is set to head to Melbourne for the Commonwealth Games. Three months out, thousands have secured tickets and there's good news for those thinking about heading across the Tasman to follow the Kiwis' chase for gold. <laughs> Playing ball for the camera, but this isn't even the scary version. I, I quite often yell and I'm quite vocal at my trainings. I suppose that's why I'm uh, like I am, I suppose, but comfy. It was easier in front of a camera because you get no response. <laughs> A response is what Spark hopes it can achieve promoting his image. Complete with golden sweat, an advertising campaign will showcase athletes ahead of the Games. Already 4,000 Kiwi fans are booked to go to Melbourne, and as teams are announced, friends and family are snapping up tickets. It's my son Dean Kent has uh, qualified and will be swimming in the 400 and 200 individual medley events. As Dean Kent of New Zealand goes in and wins it. It's uh, very emotional, really. When you see your offspring coming into this massive Olympic stage or Commonwealth stage. New Zealand's got a very big team for these games, so consequently that puts more pressure on things. So my pick of it is it'll certainly be one of the largest contingents of New Zealand to go to a Commonwealth Games, uh, certainly since 1990 in our own uh, home base in Auckland. Only 200 tickets out of 7,000 were allocated to New Zealand for the netball final, but there's better news for rugby fans. Hundreds more tickets to the final day of the Sevens have been freed up after a lack of interest in Victoria. But certainly we're looking for a huge amount of support, certainly in Melbourne being so close. And those supporters will be hoping to be treated to scenes like this, with only three months left for the Sevens side to return to its golden form. Ben Tornquist, One News. The England cricket team lost the one-day series in Pakistan, but they did have a consolation win in a low-scoring final match in Rawalpindi. Vikram Solanke helped England recover after a bad start. He top-scored with 49 off 86 balls on a slow pitch difficult for batting. Andrew Flintoff joined him in a useful partnership of 65 for the fourth wicket, and he managed to lift this one over the ropes. Liam Plunkett made an important contribution at the end. He made 24 off just 12 balls, including the six off the last ball of the innings. Pakistan danger man Cameron Akmal didn't fire in this match. The scorer of two centuries in the series was out for 11. The home team's best batsman in the match was Yasser Hamid. This boundary, part of a 101-run partnership with Mohammad Yusuf. 
But Pakistan lost wickets regularly. This was the ninth to fall run and now it caught by Paul Collingwood after the ball finally fell from the sky. Pakistan needed six of the last ball of the match to tie. Liam Plunkett did what he had to do for England and the touring team won by six runs. The International Tennis Federation has handed its most severe ban ever for a positive drugs test. Argentinian Mariano Puerta has been banned for eight years, his career effectively at an end. This is the second time 27-year-old Puerta has been busted for drugs. In February 2003, he was suspended for nine months. Now he's gone for eight years, the first time ever a tennis player has been banned for more than two years for a doping offence. Uh, yo... He tested positive to a cardiac stimulant after losing the French Open final in June. Apparently it came from medication Puerta's wife takes for hypertension. He has three weeks to appeal. Another big name taking a fall was Austrian ski ace Hermann Mayer, who spectacularly exited a World Cup giant slalom in Slovenia. The Hermanator, a two-time Olympic gold medalist, was roughed up but otherwise unhurt. He has a history of high-profile crashes, the best known during the Winter Olympics in Nagano, Japan. One man you'd find hard to take the fall is new heavyweight champion Nikolai Valuev. The Russian weighs in at 146 kgs and stands at 2.13 metres. He's the first Russian heavyweight champ and the biggest of all time, following his win over American John Ruiz at the weekend. A former basketball player and discus thrower, Valuev has been dubbed the Beast of the East. Among his welcoming committee in St. Petersburg was his diminutive wife, Galena, who weighs 100 kilograms less than he does, the pair making a snug couple as they'd left for home. David DeSoma, One News. He's a big one. Los Angeles Lakers star Kobe Bryant has produced a giant killing performance in the NBA. He netted a career-high 62 points against Dallas, without even playing the fourth quarter. He scored 30 of those in the third quarter. And he knocked it down, a right-handed reverse, as he worked diagonally across the paint. Kobe has it right wing, pulls up on a three. Oh! Oh, must have got a jump! Oh, my goodness! Kobe waving to the crowd. Better than 19,000 here at Staples Center, up on their feet. You know, it's, it's tough to describe, you know, when you get in one of those rhythms, you just get in a groove and uh, you know, things just start happening for you. The Lakers' all-time scoring record is 71 points set in 1960. Now, most people won't score 60 points in two full games. It's incredible. Not running so hot as Real Madrid, the glamour side has been upset this morning by racing Santander in the first game under caretaker coach Juan Ramon Caro. Real was denied twice within seconds in the 12th minute after superb saves by the racing goalkeeper. And with just three league wins this season, racing stunned Ronaldo and co with goals in the 22nd and 32nd minute. <laughs> Booed by the fans at halftime, Ronaldo did his best to get Real back on track, but it wasn't enough. The final score, 2-1. Real Madrid now fifth on the table, 11 points behind leader Barcelona. The Dunedin creators of a sporting innovation hope their technology will give our cyclists a more comfortable ride and our elite athletes the competitive edge. They say Dialed in Motion is the first technology in the world to analyse a bike rider's position and our top cyclists are already taking the lead. New Zealand cyclist Ali Shanks is relatively new on the circuit but she's already won silver and bronze at the Oceania Games. To succeed, she trains hard and heads to top technology for her competitive edge. OK, Ali, we'll get you and set you up on your bike. Jump on. Dialed in motion is the brainchild of a group of Kiwi experts. You put your hands down on your drops and just look straight ahead. Yep, there's video you now, that's great. Thank you. Once videoed, analysis begins. This angle here is too small, so the seat needs to go up a wee bit, and then this distance here from the knee to the pedal shaft is too too big so the seat needs to go back a wee bit as well. Then it's just a few adjustments. Those bars need to come up around a wee bit. For the perfect position. It comes down to often a few seconds with a you know a win or lose and so yeah the dial motion has you know enabled the position to be a lot more efficient. 
Other top athletes have used the technology, including Sarah Ulmer, before last year's Olympics. And the world record may fall as well. It will! What a Just about all other bike fitting technology around the world uses static images. They use uh, rulers, spirit levels, and, and because we cycle in motion, we feel that you should be actually measured while you're in motion, and then you freeze the frame of interest and take the measurements off there. But it's not just for the elite. It's really for everyone, but uh, as a retailer, most time it's trying to get people comfortable and enjoying their bikes. And with the number of Christmas bikes soon to be delivered around the country, comfort is just what Santa ordered. Megan Martin, One News. Nice, and don't forget, three more sleep to Christmas. Ooh, yes, indeed. Thanks, Neil. Christmas is meant to be the season of goodwill, but... Sadly, close-ups found a few lacking in the festive spirit. That's right, Jude. Our hunt for the country's biggest Scrooge is hotting up. You're not going to believe how stingy some have been. One wins the turkey tonight. An expert on Al-Qaeda assesses the future for Hamid Soudan, the man held hostage in Iraq. And we serve up some Christmas cooking tips and meet the man who lays claims to being the country's biggest cricket fan. After the break, Karen tells us if the unsettled weather will be clear by Christmas, and he's really got the bug, the six-year-old who's made a rare discovery.